see this jQuery long string of numbers, 22. What this is doing is, um, every time a new copy of jQuery goes to the page, uh, a unique identifier is generated for that copy of jQuery. So that way, if you have multiple copies of jQuery on the page, uh, and you bind multiple events to an element, they won't even conflict with each other. So, that, so you can have a jQuery of, from jQuery 1, 2, 3, and jQuery, say, 1.3, both living on the page at the same time, both binding events, and they, they won't uh, affect each other. So they're, they're attaching their information there with a unique ID, and then later on we can look that up and get, get this information for them. It's a it's interesting system. Uh, other people or other libraries, as I said, are starting to head in this direction. Um, but I, I'm, I'm happy that we were able to do it. Uh, so <coughs> here's, I just wanted to show uh, how the, some of the data methods work. Um, another thing that we added in is the ability to uh, trigger events related to data setting and getting. But this is specifically for uh, advanced plugins. Uh, you see the CTJ for for example. All right, so selectors. Currently, selector engines, jQuery included, uh, generally work in this manner, in that they uh, start at the very beginning of a selector, and they'll work their way down uh, to the ultimate conclusion. So in this case, so we have uh, uh, find all pair guests that are a child of the fifth. But the, uh, all selector engines currently, so JavaScript selector engines, go through and say, find all the divs on the page, go through each of the divs, then go through each of the children, and then verify if each individual child is a parent of them. Um, another example here. Um, so this is final paragraphs that are ancestor of a div. And again, it's a very similar thing. Go through all divs, loop through all divs, and then uh, find, and then and again, uh, do another query on each individual div to find all the paragraphs. The problem here, though, is that this is this the slowest part of all current selector functions is right here. It's on the merging results and then figuring out the unique results. Because the, the issue is, is that if, if there wasn't any uh, merging, or uh, the merging is essential, but the, if there wasn't any unique thing, you'd end up with these massive piles of, uh, of results. Since people, well, in this case, people like to put divs inside divs inside divs. And so you end up having duplicate results all over the place. So when you only expect maybe 10 results, you might end up with you know, 100 instead. And that isn't something that you want to do. So in this case, um, the, the, again, well, the bottleneck for all selector engines is running those two methods. <clears throat> so one thing that I've been working on recently is a new selector engine I mentioned it previously on the same jQuery. Um, I call it, I, I just code-named it uh, Sizzle. And, and again, it's, it's much, much faster than uh, other libraries there. It's quite small, only about 4K. And one thing that I wanted to do with this is that I wanted to make this engine very standalone, and that it, it, it wouldn't have any dependencies, even on jQuery. Um, so what's happened now is that since I've had this standalone engine, I've been contacted by the MokiKit project and the Prototype project. So it's very likely that this engine will be used in a, a variety of libraries. Which is excellent. So how it works is that it works in a fundamentally very different way. Uh, from how jQuery and the library does it now. In that it's, it works, it starts at the end of the query and then works its way back. And so in this case, it finds all, so for div p, it finds all paragraphs, and then for each paragraph, goes through and checks to see if it has a div ancestor. And the nice uh, side effect of this is that there is, there's no merging, there's no, you don't have to verify if anything's unique, it's just because you only end up ever doing one query into the page, so there's no possibility for there ever being conflict. Um, so it's, it, it, at least as far as performance goes, it's sort of, it, it can be a wash sometimes. Sometimes it can be, it can be faster, so especially for like uh, child queries. So, uh, because, so for div, you know, child p, what that query is reduced to is now is find all paragraphs, is for each paragraph, does, that, does, does the parent have a div name, which is dramatically simpler. Uh, and it's, it's much, much faster. And so the performance, though, it relies a lot upon um, the structure of the page. And, but at least in most cases, uh, it, it's roughly equivalent to what we have now. 
But the design effect is that the code is much, much simpler, and it's, it's pretty fast. What uh, I should also mention is that, so I was working out this way. Um, my day job right now, so I work for Mozilla. Um, and it's interesting because I was chatting with the guys who work in the CSS like engine in Firefox. And this is exactly how they do it. And, and in fact, this is how they do it in all uh, browsers. They, they query, they start at the, at the element and then query the way back up. Yep. Yeah. If you encounter another paragraph, do you kind of cache that? So you put them in a pool, and as you go up, you see a div, you know that both of them have it, or do you just do yeah. each paragraph? Yeah, yeah. As I go on, every time I touch an element, I'm just like, I've already touched this. Right. Okay, so you get a whole bunch at once. There's a huge. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, for example, if you have one div, and then 100 paragraphs, <coughs> it, would just, it, would just, it would just only do one step. Step down, step down, step down. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. So yeah, so this is how our browser engine is doing it right now, which is um, uh, really very cool. So two techniques I, I use in, in, in Sizzle that end up um, uh, helping out. So the first one uh, is a form of caching. This is for Firefox. Two, three, and Opera nine uh, right now, and the the problem. So one, one thing that exists now is that you want to be able to cache queries so that if you, if you say div, yeah, you uh, you only want to redo that query again if there's new stuff on the page. But it's really hard to determine if new stuff is coming to the page in the meantime. Um, so it's again, it's hard to invalidate that cache. So one thing that uh, it's nice is that uh, Firefox 2.3 and Opera 9 provide these three DOM events, uh, DOM attribute modified, uh, DOM node inserted, DOM node removed. So any time an attribute is modified, any time a DOM is removed or inserted, um, an event will fire. And I'll, I'll instantly invalidate the cache. Um, this, is, this is pretty much cheating because, uh, we'll, like at the selector tests, the, it, they they only they work by running it like five ten times, and to see how you know how the speed improves over time. But since we're we're able to cache it, it, it it's it is cheating and it's not cheating. That's it's perfectly legit. But we do get a lot faster. Uh, <laughs> um, so the, the other thing is um, uh, one one thing that I wanted out of um, this new rewrite is that right now the the jQuery selector engine there's there's only certain parts that you can extend. Um, and that's most you know, we had it structured that way mainly for performance concerns. Um, so I, one thing I wanted when, in this rewrite is that I wanted to be highly readable, uh, very uh, easy to use. That, like like you can that, so you can open up a source code and understand what's going on, uh, and easy to extend. So for example, there's a new method uh, get elements by class name, which is available in uh, Firefox three, uh, Safari three. And I think it might be an argument. Uh, but so since we don't know if uh, a browser will have a method or not, this is the entirety of the code here uh, to add this functionality in. So we, we simply check to see if the, if the method exists. And if so, we add in, um, uh, so with this expression order, uh, that's the order in which the, uh, the different queries are analyzed. And then here, we would finally we just we do the the final match by class name, and so yeah, it, it ends up being three, four, about five lines of code there to add that new functionality, and that's what I really like. Okay, so another part um, uh, in, in jQuery, uh, I mentioned this again in the say jQuery, is the manipulation, manipulating the portions of the page, uh, so append, prepend, before, and after. Uh, taking a chunk of HTML and inserting it to the page. Um, also, you know, HTML in you know a jQuery uh, statement. So this is. Um, it's, I want to explain how this works because it can be pretty uh, complicated. Um, but the, the that whole process is broken down into three steps. We take the HTML that comes in. Uh, we clean it up. We, need, we then need to convert the HTML into a DOM structure. And then we need to take that DOM structure and reject it. So the, the main thing that we do in cleaning is to convert any uh, XML, like syntax, into HTML. So currently, we can't handle 